What do you say, guys? Welcome to the Cubs baseball channel. We're going to talk catching and third base options as far as the Cubs are concerned with guys that could potentially make an impact on the big league roster sometime soon. You asked for it, and you got it. That's why I love the comments section. Welcome to the Cubs baseball channel. I'm Mick Gillespie. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's get this thing started. Go Cubs! What do you say, everybody? I'm Mick Gillespie, and again, uh, we appreciate you being here on the Cubs Baseball Channel. Like and subscribe, and don't forget, I'm at Broadcaster Mick on the socials. Our shows are presented by the Tennessee Smokies and their team store, SmokiesBaseball.com backslash store. Now that you got all that holiday money in your pocket, swing by there and take advantage of great prices and some really cool content um, and uh products and baseball cards autographs from guys like Pete Crow Armstrong what you're going to want that uh Owen Casey and other guys so uh find out for yourself smokiesbaseball.com backslash store all right let's get into this you guys I said hey what do you guys want to know from me I said let give me some show ideas the Cubs haven't made a whole lot of moves uh yesterday was interesting because the Blue Jays signed uh, Kevin Kiermeyer to play center field. They only paid $10 million. Some people are saying that doesn't mean that they're out of the Cody Bellinger mix. Well, I mean, if you got Vlad Jr. that plays first, you know, and you got Kiermeyer, who's a, you know, a perennial gold glover in center field, what, what are you going to do, right? You got the corners sewed up. But I could see them still maybe making a deal. But I mean, it's going to be a long term deal if you get them. What about the Giants? You know, they they made a deal. They got the star out of Korea. You know, maybe you still to play center field. You know, maybe you you still sign Bellinger. They're desperate to try to get somebody to come to San Francisco. They're having trouble with the free agent market because of issues in their city, according to Buster Posey, who I think is a first ballot Hall of Famer, by the way. I, I absolutely love Buster Posey, really do. Uh, but they're just trying to get people to come there. Maybe they overpay him to get him there. I think Cody Bellinger's path is to come back to the Cubs. You know, maybe the Angels, which is a uh, destined wasteland at this point with Otani leaving and and no, you know, no prospects in their system and just really needing a rebuild. If Bellinger wants to win, Chicago's the right the right place for him. And I'm not just saying that because, you know, I like the Cubs and this is the Cubs baseball channel. If I didn't think that, I'd tell you that. So let's kind of think about prospects that the Cubs have in two positions of need for this team, like changing gears. And the first one is catcher. And I've told you guys this, and I'm going to say it again. There, It's not just the Cubs. And no, I'm not making an excuse for them for not developing catchers. I've been around a long time. I mean, I remember when they developed Wellington Castillo and Steve Clevenger. I, I remember that's how I got to know Jody Davis. He was the Cubs catching coordinator. And he did a really good job of, of, of helping develop those guys. Robinson Torinos is still one of the all-time best players I ever saw. And, and then... He was a shortstop in 2007 and then eventually came back as a catcher, got he traded in the uh, the deal that brought Matt Garza to Chicago, right, for Sam Fold and him, and Brandon Geyer. You know, we've talked about that deal. Chris Archer, not a great trade in Cubs history. <laughs> but he was great. I, I loved him on the other end of great. Like, it was he was awesome as a catcher. And it was really fun watching one of the Cubs' all-time greats, Jody Davis like kind of helped work with him and then where he got um you know Ryan Sandberg, Bill Dancy, I loved him. And and then you know we 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 got Kyle Schwarber. And it was like, hey, this guy, you know, he needs a lot of work at catching and then they did, they didn't they got impatient. Because 
he wasn't a very good catcher, but when he was in the minor leagues, he was like a top 10 hitter, lefty hitter in all of baseball, not just the minor leagues, you know? And then the Cubs needed him and Joe Madden called him up. And then he's, he had, he's still a man without a position, right? I mean, he's a DH. And I think that he could have been a catcher had they given him the opportunity to do that. And scouts were saying that to me. They're like, look, this guy, it's going to take him 500 games of catching in the minor leagues. Think about that. 500 minor league games and you play 140 in a season around that, right? So that's like three seasons of doing that. And then when he was with the AA affiliate of the Cubs, the Smokies, he wasn't even playing every day behind the plate. He was at, one day he was catching, one day he was either DHing or he was off. Uh, and then the other guy was Wilson Contreras, who wasn't even a prospect, and then was going back and forth. And he ended up being the guy that was the Cubs catcher. And then, you know, and they obviously, they, they put Schwarbs in the outfield and DH, and then eventually, you know, they released him, which we can all talk about that. Not a great move. And, uh, and then they, you know, they let um, Willie go, and, that, and that's a whole other argument there. But you look at the system right now, and they're going to need someone like Wilson Contreras to pop up because he wasn't on any of the prospect guides. And then all of a sudden he just got there and he was going back and forth on days getting the extra help because the Cubs were trying to put money into, you know, and, and, and educators in the Schwarber and he's there. And, and, and it was, it was Contreras that figured it out. Right. So you look at where the Cubs are right now, the number one catching prospect to me for the Cubs is Pablo Aliendo. And I don't know if he's an everyday, like, prospect I, I i mean player i don't know if he's an everyday starter i think he's a he's a guy who will get to the big leagues and and i think he needs to make a huge jump uh to be a big league star you know or a big league starter but if but if i'm like saying hey who's the number one catching prospect for the cubs it's got to be aliendo you know he's he's got a decent arm he you know, he, he there's games where he looks really good behind the plate. He's got to be more consistent there. Love the the fire and the passion that he plays with. He can hit a little bit. Um, still has a lot of work to do if he's going to kind of step up there. You saw Miguel Amaya last year. Nothing about him's going to knock your socks off. Admirable backup. You know, good enough where you could get rid of uh, Tucker Barnhart on the roster. But Jan Gomes is the big league catcher, and I don't feel like unless Amaya makes the same type of jump that Aliendo needs to make, is going to really compete for the everyday job behind the plate, right? The Cubs' top prospect, as far as a guy listed as a catcher, is Moises Ballesteros, right? The issue with him is he can hit, and, and I think he's going to continue to hit. He got the double A at the end of last season. But he just doesn't have the build, doesn't have the balance. Runners just steal all over the place on him. He's got to cut down the running game. And that's become a lot more important because they've enlarged the bases. They've limited uh, the amount of throws you can make to a base. So having a catcher that can't throw guys out, it stands out a lot more now. So you got to have somebody that can do that. Now, Ballesteros plays first base. He DHs. He's a good hitter. So we'll see where he, where he goes. Uh, but but right now, I don't really consider him a catching prospect. I consider him a prospect because he's a good hitter. But I, I, I just don't know that you can put him behind the plate every day. You know, some people have said, what about Bryce Windham? Bryce Windham's another guy who can hit a little bit. He, he obviously had a really good finish last year in Iowa and AAA. Good enough dude. Still has a lot of work to do. But what's, to me, what's interesting about him is that it's not like the bar that you're jumping over is that high. You know, just keep getting better. Keep grinding it out. And maybe he's a guy who will eventually get there, but, you know, still has some work to do for sure. And then, you know, the Cubs go out and, they, and they're, they're making deals for catchers because they know that their organization right now isn't really deep in that position. All right, the other position that you guys asked about was third base. 
And I'm going to tell you that the Cubs' best options are this. Sign a third baseman, which could be a Matt Chapman type. Swing Christopher Morrell over into a third baseman and, and, and get him to be an everyday third baseman, get over at the hot corner, figure it out, do it. He, we saw him play a lot of that during the Dominican League. And then prospect-wise, here's the three guys that I could see as potential candidates to be your third baseman. I'm going to start with B.J. Murray. This guy won me over in the A playoffs. Great eye. Sometimes you wonder, like, does, does he have the power you know, the power to to play third base. Um, but then you saw when, when when the game started to really count, it, it was amazing watching his eye-hand coordination, the big hits that he came up with. When the, the biggest games of the season were there, he was the best player. Plus, he was in the Futures game. Plus, he's a young guy. He's got... You know, he's he's got a good arm at third base, solid defensively, probably needs to be a little bit more consistent over there, but that's what the minor leagues are all about. I, I would say maybe as he gets stronger, hits, you know, instead of doubles, maybe some more home runs. But he's a he's a distinct possibility. Matt Shaw, Cubs first round pick out of Maryland last year, shortstop. Well, he's not playing shortstop. But what I love about the Cubs scouting is that they make smart moves. Like if you draft shortstops, you can move those guys around. They can play other positions. It's actually in the world of scouting, a brilliant move because a shortstop can play center field. A shortstop can play second. Look at Nico Horner. A shortstop can play left field, right field. And a shortstop can play third base. So Matt Shaw didn't play much third last season. But maybe the Cubs say, "Hey, you know what? We're going to put you at third and and and, and kind of start to work you in that. You know, maybe you you do a little bit of third for Shaw, a little bit of second, and then and and a little bit of shortstop, and a lot of third. So let me say that again: a little bit of short, a little bit of second, a lot of third, and start to develop him as a guy that can do a little bit of everything, but a lot of third. And then maybe he's your guy, but he can hit." Um, I thought I thought that the Cubs did a very good job drafting him. He's got a quick bat. I, he hasn't developed his power yet, hitting with wood, but that could definitely come. But the, he's got he look, man. He's got the range. He's got the arm, and he's only been in professional baseball for like a couple months. So the fact that he was able to hold his own in Double A. It is either tells you that double A baseball isn't that good or he is. And I'm going to say it's probably that he is. Then the other option is Luis Vasquez. You start watching this guy's highlight reel. He's a shortstop. You're going to be like, oh, man, this guy can pick it, man. Great range. Looks like he's on skates at short. Well, you got Dansby. He's not playing shortstop. Now, he he can give Dansby some days off. And this is a guy that the Cubs would have loved to have had last year. Instead of having, you know, Swanson out of gas at the end of the season, you throw Vasquez in there and and give, um, you know, and, and give Dansby some days off. But he's not playing second and he's not playing short. You got two gold, gold glovers there. Well, you put Vasquez at third and there's a potential to have another gold glover. Yeah, I'm saying it. I mean, this guy could possibly be a gold glove third baseman. It all depends on how that translates, but he's got range. He's got hands. He anticipates. He's got cat-like reflexes. He's a tremendous defender. He can hit a little bit. We saw that last year. Actually had his best offensive season as a, a, a Cubs minor leaguer. But he, this guy was like in double A, like, you know, 18, 19 years old, you know, just kind of for stents. And then when he got there as like a real, like, hey, it's my time. Oh, yeah, tremendous. He's on the Cubs 40-man roster. So sooner than later, they're going to have him in Chicago. Luis Vasquez could be the guy that mans the hot corner for the Cubs if they don't make a deal in the offseason. 
So that's what we're looking at right now. Uh, you guys tell me what you think. Maybe there's somebody down the minor league system that I'm not thinking of for that particular spot. You know, some of the guys, I, I, I'll i be honest, I haven't seen a whole lot of. Uh, James Trianos, who's a second baseman, I, I saw a, a little bit of him. I know he can hit. Um, and, you know, Jefferson Rios, I haven't seen him play at all, so I can't really tell you, you know, where he would fit into, you know, my – you know, my thoughts, Christian Hernandez, another guy I haven't I haven't seen, but I've heard about Josh Rivera. I mean, so you, you're talking about some guys that are coming and that's why the Cubs have one of the best farm systems in, you know, in baseball. I'm only t- I'm just going to tell you the guys that I've seen. And if I haven't seen him yet, then that means that they're in the lower levels of the minor leagues. It's not like they're going to jump up and, and be in the big leagues before we could do a video on them. <laughs> Anyway, appreciate all you guys hanging out. Hopefully the Cubs will make uh, that splash move that a lot of you guys are hoping that they do. Make sure that you like and subscribe. And again, continue to tell me what you guys want to talk about. Love the show ideas. And uh, hopefully, um, you know, we'll continue to do that. And don't forget that we're brought to you by the Tennessee Smokies and their team store. Swing by there and check them out. Smokiesbaseball.com backslash store. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.